these are my cars and I'm very they own the each car has its own history and uh, two from Phoenix and one from California it's uh, it's a nice hobby but it takes time and effort to get them in good condition but I like it nice it's a 58 built in San Jose Yeah. We found out when we had to have the car painted for someone. I don't know what happened to Moses. Is his face lifted? But it's like Hawaii. It comes and you go. It disappears. Just enough to mess up everything. Uh huh. With an ice cream roof and an ice cream style. Oof, I'm getting dizzy. I know, yeah. I'm working too fast oh, after it. a big meal, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Lars! <laughs> it's his car. <laughs> Look, we're getting photographed here. <laughs> so, yeah. Did you get it? Alan, yeah. you fixed it. Good. Thank you. There you this go. Is painted in snow Isn't it pretty? White and ice cream. Green. And the interior. Well, to, um, to uh, have these nice Elson cars, you need a good mechanic. <laughs> and Alan has been uh, my mechanic for the last almost uh, eight, ten years. And he's uh, an expert to handle these, these cars. I'm not a good mechanic by myself, but Alan do all the good work to get it done. The full restoration of the, the 410 motor to this, he has redone the whole motor and also some smaller stuff that needs to be taken care of during during time and years so i'm very happy about this thank you alan is a well-skilled mechanic and he's also into the hobby but he has some ford crown victoria 55 and a ford uh, 1946 convertible that's that's yeah. for sure yeah. <laughs> this is uh, dave gilbert from uh, san francisco and he has been the mechanic of Michael Kaus, former 1960 Ranger convertible. So what have you done with the car during the years, Dave? Oh, it's been 35 years. Can yeah. I remember everything? <laughs> Flashing lights, the, the turn signal was a problem. We mm -hmm. took care of that. We took care of leaking power steering rams. Yeah. And then it's the carburetor linkage and blah 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 you know <laughs> running like bad behavior yeah. and we have to take care of that and it's easy for me because i have the passion to work with the mid-century american cars so it's easy for me but for michael it's he's not uh, a mechanic yeah he we needs to paint little things mm -hmm. but when you're talking about smoke and leaking he comes to me we have a funny story also that uh, some 35 years ago i wrote dave a letter and asking if he wanted to sell his <laughs> turquoise and white citation convertible <laughs> the same sister car that i have today but he said no it's not up for sale and no, so, uh, Dave was making too much money at that time. He doesn't need the money. He <laughs> loves the car. He's keeping it. Yeah. Sorry, Lars. <laughs> and now I tell that's him, you have first right of refusal. Oh, that sounds good. Because we love to have mm. the American 1950s, 60s cars in Sweden because they are good custodians mm -hmm. that respect the cars, really believe in these cars, more so than U.S. USA, they want muscle cars, they mm. want uh, hot rods, they mm. want mag wheels and uh, like air that, conditioning yeah. and all mm. the modern stuff. They don't really care about the 1950s elegance. Mm. Yeah. Lars is the, the master of originality. <laughs> leave, yeah. leave the car alone. As it was, yes, that's for because sure. Because it's good enough. And this that. is first trip for Dave in Sweden. We're going to go to the power meet to see it around 10, 15,000 cars. Yes, that's going to be fun. We're going to lead shopping. <laughs> yep, we're that's excited. Be, yeah, about it. Maybe you see some Edsels. We hope so. Uh, here in the car, I have Phil Skinner from Los Angeles, California, and I have Michael Cowles from San Francisco, California. Uh, we're sitting in my 1958 Citation Convertible. I bought this car 1950. It's, it's a 1958 model, but I bought it 1992 in Phoenix, Arizona from a guy named Ray 
Kudik. Ron Kudik. Ron, Ron Kudik. And uh, I brought this to Sweden and it's been under restoration for about five years. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a, I would say, a pretty good car. So, Phil, can you tell us a little bit about the history of the Edsel and so on? Well, the Edsel was originally developed to be kind of a medium price car. Uh, if you went over to General Motors, you started with Chevrolet as your entry level car, then you move up to Pontiac, then to Oldsmobile, Buick, and then Cadillac. If you went over to Chrysler Corporation, you had the Plymouth, the Dodge, the DeSoto, the Chrysler, and the Imperial. If you went over to Ford, all you had was the Ford, the Mercury, and the Lincoln. So there were some gaps in the market, and they were hoping that the Edsel would help fill some of those gaps at Ford Motor Company. Uh, <clears throat> it was a uh, kind of a very strong project. Ford invested at the time $250 million, and those today's money would be well over $2.5 billion. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the cars were to be designed so they looked like no other car out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, just it was an unfortunate thing, a number of things that came together that made it a perfect failure. Uh, we had a recession going on, there was poor initial construction quality, and uh, there was just some infighting within the, the company. The Korean War came along? Mm -hmm. The Korean War was uh, in 53. No, yeah, yeah, this was 58 when the car came out. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Anyway, so the uh, cars all came out in 1957, and like I said, there was the Eisenhower recession going on, there was poor uh, initial quality construction. Mm -hmm. As a result, they just didn't sell a whole lot. This Citation convertible we're sitting in, that was made in two different assembly plants, and they only made 930 of these cars. And today there's probably 150 of them accounted for, of which maybe half of those still exist. And the convertibles have a very high survival rate because they're very much more collectible. Mm -hmm. But some Edsels, we've got very few of them left. And uh, they're a very rare car, so it's kind of neat. It was introduced on September 4th, 1957, 18 different models and four different series, plus you know, included five station wagons. Uh, 59 model year, they pared it down to just 10 models and two series. And uh, 1960, the cars were in, on produc in production for only about two months. They went on sale October 15th, 1959, November 19th, one month and four days later. Mm -hmm. Gone. Ford said, that's it, we're <laughs> pulling the plug. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So you want to ask more questions? Uh, what do you think, how many in this condition do you have in the United States? I would say there is probably less than a dozen okay. high caliber, really, really nice citation mm -hmm. convertibles. Yours is one of the finest yeah. in the world. And this one is painted in turquoise with with a uh, frost white, isn't it? It was mm -hmm. frost combination. white. Do you know how many combinations of colors that they had in 1958? Several hundred, didn't they? With red on black, we black had, on we white. We have figured there's about 238 different color combinations. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Available. So there was quite a few. There I was adding for, for uh, to, to find is a turquoise and white citation because, you know, I like the originality of the colors and the styling. So, but uh, nobody answered, so I had to figure out who who am I going to get an offer? And I remember that I called up uh, Ron Kudik of uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and he said, the car is not for sale. And I asked him, okay, it's not for sale, but what about if you get $25,000 for the car? And he said, okay, that, that will be okay. It became for work. sale. It became for Everything sale. Everything for sale once you get a price. Yeah, that's correct. And the sure. turquoise of this era, this is, this is perfect mid-century modern mm -hmm. colors right mm -hmm. here. They had the corals, the pinks, mm -hmm. the pastels, of which we're starting to see some of that coming back today in some of today's cars. Yeah. I remember p for myself, uh, when I saw the Elsa the first time, I was out with my parents, and it was around 1962, and I was a little bit into the uh, old American cars, and the first time when I saw the styling, I was, oh, what is this? I turned my head, and, and some years later, I've become an Edsel fan, so this is, I have had during the years about 10 Edsels. And what are some of the features on this car that are sort of different? And I noticed that you have a tachometer in this car mm -hmm. and you also have a speed warning. Yeah. Those are pretty unusual, aren't they? Yeah, I bought the uh, NOS speed warning light from uh, my friend in uh, Thibodeau, Louisiana, Gerald Lassane. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. and he also sold me the NOS power antenna. Oh. So during the years I've um, collected all the NOS parts to put on the so car. So this is the Citation, which is the top of the line yes. for Edsel, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Didn't they also make a lower end Edsel that was built on the Ford chassis? Yeah, that's the Pacer. My Phil knows more than that, but, uh -huh. but it's Pacer Ranger. Yeah. How many Pacers series? did they make? Do you know? Convertibles? 1,876 Pacer convertibles were produced. Uh -huh. And how many did you say have they made the Citation? 930. Quite a few just less. About, mm -hmm. Just about uh, more, less than half, half yeah. of what the Pacers were. And this car sold, it was the top, uh, top priced Edsel and it was new, it was $3,800 for the mm -hmm. base model. A lot of money. The number of options that are included in this particular car, your radio was an option, mm -hmm. the heater was an option, yeah. the tachometer, the <laughs> clock, the power windows, power seats, power steering, power brakes, the backup lights, the power radio antenna, mm -hmm. the bumper guards, all of these were extras. Yeah. In fact, oil filter was an extra <laughs> price. Yes, the oil yeah. filter think, was also an option. Yeah, it's like, think. oh gee, how That's about amazing. a steering wheel? Is that optional too? Uh -huh. uh, but no, they were, and what happened is, <clears throat> because of the way the automotive world did it, it Edsel wasn't unique to charging for that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And starting in 1959 is when they had what we call the window stickers. It's called the Moroni Law came in, where we had a window sticker that had to list, list everything that was extra. Yeah. Mm. And all of a sudden, things <coughs> that had been extra, well, they became part of the standard package. You know, like $6.95 for an oil filter that you could go down to any auto parts store and buy for 99 cents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of little things like that that uh, changed the auto industry, tried to make it a little more fair for consumers. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Edsel today, you know, they only made 110,647 in the United States. They actually made just under 7,500 in Canada also. Okay. So there's about 118,000 Edsels built worldwide. And uh, <clears throat> almost from the time they were discontinued, people started thinking, well, that car's different, that car's different. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's starting in like 1968 is when people started to, maybe we should start collecting these vehicles. They are, they're kind of special. Mm -hmm. And because of the efforts of uh, people like Perry Piper, Edsel Ford, uh, Edsel Henry Ford, uh, Dave Sinclair and other members in the uh, Edsel world mm -hmm. started to put the Edsels together. Today, the Edsel has a very high survivor rate. Mm -hmm, yeah. And uh, your car is one of those cars. In fact, your car was featured in a very early magazine article on mm -hmm, the Edsel. Yeah. When uh, Ron Kudik had it, yeah. uh, we knew this car is 258 Jim. <coughs> the license plate? That was the license plate, uh -huh, 258 yeah. JIM. Mm -hmm. And uh, this particular car is, is quite well known in the. Uh, it was in a magazine article called Special Interest Autos. Yeah, mm. and I had it. 1972. <laughs> yeah. What is the curb weight, do you think, on this car? A lot. A lot. Okay. <laughs> I got to tell you. It's much heavier than the Pacer. Well, with with uh, just by itself, it's about uh, 4,000 pounds. With us in it, 5,000. That is, yeah. So you're talking about a dollar a pound here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Today's, and yeah, yeah today. I got to tell you guys that I had the opportunity to visit Roy Brown, the chief designer mm -hmm. of chief the. Chief stylist, uh, is he yeah. yes. It was a great moment, and he invited me to his summer home in Florida, mm -hmm. and we spent I almost the full winter day. Home, wasn't it? Yeah. It's winter home in Florida. Yeah, yeah, that's that's that's. Yeah, yeah summer sure. home was up in. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was warm. Yeah. And uh, it was really nice. He told me the whole story when he started to create the design and so mm. on. And uh, he was a very nice guy, you know. A lot of people uh, confuse it when they say Ford Edsel, mm. and I'd like to correct that. You would never call a Lincoln a Ford Lincoln or a mm, Ford Mercury. That's correct. Edsel is an Edsel. It is not a Ford mm -hmm. Edsel. And I just want that's to set a good that point. record clear. Yeah. Or yeah. like a Chrysler Dodge, because mm -hmm. yeah. Dodge is made by it's Chrysler. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was an independent make by itself. Um, and it don't, let's say it only lasted the three model years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very, very limited. But this is my, in my mm -hmm. world, this is the real Edsel with the horse collar grill and the styling. It's, it's the pure Edsel. Yeah. It's the pure Edsel. And the name Edsel came from Henry Ford's only son, mm -hmm. yeah. who died, what, in 1949? 1943. 1943. 43, 43, May yeah. of 1943. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and uh, Henry Ford's son, Edsel Bryant Ford, uh, had three 
boys himself. He also had a girl, Josephine, but he had Henry Ford II, he had Benson Ford, and William Clay Ford. And uh, all three of Edsel Ford's sons took an active role within Ford Motor Company. So it was very interesting about that. And uh, um, Edsel Ford has gone on today. Mm. His son is Henry Ford III. Okay. <laughs> and Henry Ford III is a young man in his 30s who is learning the company from the ground up. So it is <coughs> the largest company in the world where somebody from the founding family, mm -hmm. I mean, that big blue oval yeah. on that building in mm -hmm. Detroit, Michigan, actually Dearborn, um, they're still there. It's still their family <coughs> business. It's still their family business. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't say that we were sitting in Sweden. So people might think Gosh, we're sitting in we California, are? but this is Stockholm, <laughs> Sweden. I'm all the way in California to visit over Sweden. here every year for the uh, Power Big Meet and some of the other major car shows. Mm -hmm. I hate to say this, there are more Edsels <coughs> that show up for the meets here than <coughs> that show up for Edsel meets. The Swedes love the Edsel. Don't go too close. If you drop something on the car, you need to go to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to remember that. Well, that's for sure. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Are we on? Okay. Yeah, some, Michael, some 20, 25 years ago, I saw this car in a... In well, a who are you? And, oh, <laughs> and what is this car? I'm Lars Salmonson from Stockholm, Sweden. I thought you were Larry the... Fi Larry, <laughs> Larry from Let's start over. <laughs> Let's Take do this. Two. We're going to start Take over. Two. Take two. Yeah, Take anyway, two. Yeah. We're I, met, this I, met, I met Michael in a car meet, in a Netzel meet, some 20, 25 years ago. I saw the car first, and I got to get in contact with the owner. So I talked to Michael and we talked about the car and I admired the car and so on and asked, is it up for sale? And he said, no, 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 this car is not up for sale. And we kept in contact, we uh, talked on the phone, I wrote letters, I went over to San Francisco and I drove the car over the Golden Gate Bridge several times. And they called up and further on and the car was never up for sale. And then suddenly I changed my tactics, 2015. <laughs> And I said to Michael, I know the car is not up for sale, but if it could be for sale, could it be 2015, 2016, or 2017? That's right. That's right. And he said, oh, Lars, you never give up. Come on over to buy the damn car. That was the story about it. That's right. Pretty much. But how did you how did you define the car from the beginning? I knew about the car because I belong to the Edsel Owners Club. I'm actually the president. My name is Michael Cowles. And uh, I knew about the car arriving at some of the meets and stuff, but then it kind of disappeared in a long, for a while. Mm -hmm. And then one day I got a telephone call back in 1983 from someone. His name was Edsel Ford, not related to the Ford family. And he says, I really have a special car for you. I'd like you to come and look at it. It's in Alameda, California. I said, sure. So I went over and he opened up the garage and this car had been sitting there for about 12 to 13 years and no one had done anything to it, but it was well protected in the garage mm -hmm. and it only had 63,000 miles on it. <coughs> and I said, wow, this is really special. And so I went to talk to Porter and Millie Goff who owned the car. They bought it originally in Santa Ana, California back in 1959. And some of the interesting things about it is he told his wife on the telephone that he was bringing home a blue 1960 convertible mm. Edsel. She liked the idea until he drove the car back and showed it to her and she said, that is not blue. She said, that looks like green or turquoise to mm. me. And he said, well, you know, there's not a lot of them out there to choose from. They only made 76 of them, so I think we better stick with what we've got. <laughs> I'm glad that he did. So he drove the car. Uh, and enjoyed it for many years and then when I bought it from him he wanted ten thousand dollars for it at that time ten thousand dollars was an astronomical amount of money to pay for an Edsel most people were getting them for about three to five hundred dollars and uh, since then of course they've become very popular I have an interesting story to tell you about the money I did not have $10,000, but I was able to come up with $5,000, and I called my father on the telephone and said, I need to borrow another $5,000. And he said, for what? And I said, it's for an Edsel convertible. And he said, 
there isn't an Edsel convertible in the world worth $5,000. <laughs> and I said, well, you don't know the half of the story. I said, I'm giving the other half of the money. Yeah. He said, oh, my gosh, $10,000, that's crazy. So he came up and looked at it. I started cleaning up the car, and when we were cleaning it up, we noticed in the trunk there was a lot of papers and a telephone book and some other things, and we pulled out the back seat because we wanted to check the motors for the uh, convertible top, and we found a piece of plastic in there that was wrapped up and stapled together, and we just simply threw it out of the back of the car. When we were finished in the day, I took out all the stuff and read the newspapers that had been back there for 10 years. And I opened up this package and found the original boot, which was missing on this car, I guess, from day one. Yeah. Later on, more information came available, and my friend Phil Skinner here did an article on the car in Collectible Automobile and Cars and Parts. And he went to Santa Ana, and believe it or not, he met the man who prepped the car back in 1959. And this is the story about the famous original boot that was missing on the car. Well, basically, you told me that when you bought the car, you asked Mr. Goff about the boot, and he said, never had one. Uh -huh. And so, like I say, they were out there cleaning the trunk. They find this thing. It had gone up, and there's a, a downward area in the very front portion of the trunk it had slid down there and had remained there from the time it was new yeah, until the time new. they brought it out and <laughs> the gentleman who actually delivered the car to Porter Golf was a gentleman by the name of Fred Harper uh -huh. he was a general sales manager you're supposed to be talking to them. oh Fred Harper uh, I'm sorry Porter Golf lived in Oakland California but the only 60 of convertible he could find was in Santa Ana California and they said, we'll hold the car, but you have to come down here and get it. So he got on the train, went down on the train station, and when he got there, the Fred Harper was there with the car, said, here's your car. They had it all prepped, had him sign the papers, and he drove it home. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was how the car was originally delivered. So he, as Michael was saying, we should tell with this, this is a 1960 Edsel Ranger mm -hmm. convertible. We didn't say that. And it's mm -hmm. one of only 76 that were uh, produced. And this is uh, one of the finest. In fact, it is the highest serial numbered Edsel uh, convertible known to exist. Mm -hmm. Now you have some oh, built on a, the last day of production, from no, what I understand, it was, it or was, close to it. It was well. There are cars that were built later, but they had lower serial numbers. But this has the highest serial number. It's actually uh, there was only four other numbers after this car. Okay. So it's a very late. Definitely production. the last convertible. That's mm -hmm. for sure. And uh, it's a very unique <coughs> piece of uh, history. And the nice thing is, what makes this car neat is its history is known from day one. The day it was bought, the person who bought it, when they bought it, where they bought it. That adds to the intrinsic value, the historical value of the car, mm -hmm. which is part of the reason we, we try to collect these cars, is to preserve that history. And when we know the history of who bought the car, that really helps. And, you know, and what's really interesting is we had Porter Goff, who's uh, since uh, left this wonderful world. and But we have Michael Cowles, who's the second caretaker. And now here it is in sunny Sweden with Lars Salmonson. And he is our current caretaker of the car. Uh -huh. You own him, you pay for him, but you're really only the caretaker until uh -huh. the next yeah, owner comes quite. along. And I'd like to add on to that, too, <clears throat> that when you buy one of these cars, they're usually restored or in the process of restoration. This car has pretty much got about 90% of its originality still intact. And mm -hmm. today's collector market, originality means everything when it comes to the value of an automobile. Yeah. You take, for instance, the interior of this car is all original except for the seats, which mm -hmm. have been reupholstered mm -hmm. because they're the hardest hit on anything. Most of the paint is original. All the chrome is original. Mm -hmm. The steering wheel, the dash, everything. The engine is all original. I had it rebuilt when we bought the car. They wanted to put a long block in it, which is like a new engine. And I said, even then, you know, for $10,000, I thought, no, you know, this is a very collectible mm -hmm. car. I'm not having another engine put in because the numbers won't match. Mm -hmm. And so I said, no, I'll pay the extra money. I want this thing rebuilt with the original engine. Mm -hmm. So we kept it intact, and everything that we did to the car when we owned it, we said we want to keep everything as original as possible. I don't want to repaint the car. I don't want to do this to it. I don't want to do that to it. I want to keep it as original as possible. When you came along and said, Michael, I like that car. 
it's original. I <laughs> yeah. said, listen, you're not going to find a more original one oh. than that. I said, Lars, even the glass on this car, including the windshield, mm -hmm. has it's never original. been broken and still has the Fomoco but on the windshield. Why did you sell the car to me? Why you did I sell it to you? During the years. I had a lot of offers, but mm -hmm. you know, I've owned the car for 34 years, mm -hmm. and my friends all said, aren't you interested in driving something else? Mm -hmm. So what did I do? I sold the car to Lars, because <laughs> I knew you would take good care of it, yeah. and I went out and bought another Edsel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Once yeah. you own one, it you is. just can't give them up. And they, what is the old saying? It's like falling in love. Uh -huh. That's their motto. What's it like to own an Edsel? Why, it's like falling in love. A lot of Edsel owners are like those guys who eat potato chips. You can't own just one. No, you don't. Know, they are very addictive and they're yeah. distinctive. The styling is beautiful on them. People didn't like them originally. They thought they were odd. But today, if you go to a car show, people just stand around mm -hmm. and gather in crowds the poor other cars they just sit there and look at us and go what is it with the Edsel today it's like everybody grown, yeah. has grown to like them uh, there so. was a uh, gentleman who made a post on one of the Facebook groups uh, just in the last week or so his Edsel and next to it is a beautiful Ferrari uh -huh. and the crowd is just circling his Edsel yeah the Ferrari sitting there and that's a Ferrari <gasps> Ooh, there's an Edsel so, yeah, it's a unique piece of automotive history, and uh, and the nice thing about you know we have some some of the nicest cars in the in the I guess the Edsel world right here today. But the nice thing about the Edsel is there's so many of them that were saved uh, that some of the sedans you can buy a nice Edsel for under ten thousand dollars mm -hmm. even That's today, right. and that yeah. makes it kind of if you want to get into the world of a collector car, the Edsel is a great way to do it. And uh, the 59 Edsels, mm -hmm. they're basically the same as a Ford mechanically, yeah. easy to maintain, but with those distinctive looks. Owning a 58 Edsel, you really have to be dedicated to the cause because there are so many unique things to it. Mm -hmm, yeah. Owning a 60 Edsel means you've gone out and actually had to do some searching to get it. Mm -hmm, I have right. a 60 Edsel station wagon that took me... Uh, seven years. To and how many did they make of that station wagon, Phil? 276. 276 station wagons. 76 convertibles. It just gives you an idea of how rare these cars, mm -hmm. this 1960 Edsel is. In Sweden now we have three convertibles. Which I, is more in the United States probably. Yeah, I, I, I bought the first one some 25 years ago from Bill Steiger in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. the red That's with when it's Edsel stall today. Yeah, right. There are only 61, did you say, of the or 70, Actually, how many of these are, are left? There are 61 of the original 76 have been accounted <coughs> for. Uh -huh. uh, and they're not drivable, most well, of them. Some of them have been scrapped, some we just have. The data them. plate, that's all that's left. We have it? the data plate. How many of these do you think are actually still on the road being driven? A dozen? Uh, maybe, yeah. A dozen in the mm. entire universe. Mm. And Lars, you own one of them now. <laughs> the best. The best. You own the best it. one yeah, on yeah. the whole world, that's the whole sure. planet. So, well, that's a story okay. about it, and it's nice to know you. We became friends because yeah. of the Edsel. We became okay. friends because of the Edsel. We all did. Give me five, big guy. Okay, guys. And I want to thank you wonderful. guys for this interview. Michael, thank Kaus you, Lars. And thank you. Skinner. Thanks for inviting us over to Sweden. Yes, yeah, we had a wonderful welcome. time. And the sun is shining like in California. Yeah, but an hour ago it was pouring <laughs> rain, and we yeah. got here with rags. <laughs>